natal greetings for your first birthday in heaven is coming five days late. Not necessary to explain to you, because she now see everything. But for the others who don't, we are just as positive June 20 takes us time. We flew here June 3, but missed his birthday because he was in LA with some really kind-hearted friends. Your ever faithful Rochelle brought Bim home because she was his assigned guardian in his DSWD papers. I had to do this corticosteroid challenge, which unfortunately caused me to have unbelievable body pain. Yes, even worse than my bone marrow aspiration when we found out I'm allergic to all forms of opoids. Well, lesson learned. I should always trust my instincts. Two hours after being given such a baby dose, I think 50 or 60 mg given, diluted through my IV divided in 5 doses. Given every 30 minutes, my BP didn't rise significantly. But two hours after everything, the steroid should help. Like make antihistamines work better, lessen pain and inflammation. The opposite happened to me. First, the hives started multiplying. Then, my body started to hurt all over. Normally, my pain tolerance is impressive. But this time, Bunso started sobbing. Then, of course, my BP went haywire. The two left for LA, me three, to wait for me. But so many times, my departure had to be moved. I knew he was allergic to morphine. I was able to tolerate Propofol and fentanyl for my procedures in Singapore, as well as in St. Luke's Global, but when it was purely fentanyl. Super rubby the effect, hives from my face to my ankles. That happened to me two hours after the corticosteroid steroid challenge because for most autoimmune issues, steroids are the first line of defense. My gut instinct said to just say no, but somehow with four doctors present, I did say yes because I figured nothing to lose by trying. And there were four of them who could revive me. We started on the Friday before elections but finished Saturday, and they couldn't leave me until almost sunrise. I was sedated from Saturday, May 7, until May 11, because my pain was just so hard to endure. I do remember that I cried to them, and said to please come home. I knew enough that they had both the VIP tour for Disneyland for May 12, and poor Josh was super excited for that. I could disappoint him because Pete and her kids were flying in. Bim and Rochelle flew home, and finally we left together with Nars Eloy, my anesthesiologist Dr. Lim, and Anne Bina. Rochelle flew separately so that she could pick up Koya, but he had already made plans and invited people to go to Disneyland again for his birthday. Noi, I wanted to be able to post good news, so let me start with that. This is from my attending physician. The cancer gene panel screened you for genes that could predispose you to the following cancers. All the genes were negative. My kidneys and my liver are still functioning normally. Praise God. Don't ask me about her flight because my BP was elevated. 167 over 90. When I woke up, it went down because our plane had engine problem. So I was able to drink medicine to help bring it down and it was stable enough when we flew after lunch. But for the whole flight, including the refueling stop, I was sedated and fast asleep. It was Monday, June 5. When I had my first dose of the medicine, we flew here for. I now understand, Noi, why you choose to keep your illness to yourself. My realization came because I do feel peace. And since no info will be coming from me after this post, I'm closing one area of stress that I really don't want nor will come. But I don't want to express my heartfelt gratitude for all who have prayed for me to get better. But I do have multiple autoimmune syndrome. Before, I had two autoimmune thyroiditis, and chronic spontaneous urticaria. My third confirmed autoimmune condition is vasculitis, but leave it to your sister. There are different types of vasculitis. I had to have a very rare type. It was formerly known as charge Strauss syndrome, but now it's EGPA. We came here for me to try my polysomal, not yet if they approve in Singapore, nor the Philippines. For the patient, to get the full effect, you need 300 mg every month. I was told it had much less side effects than Sunir. By now, you know that Bunso enjoys being different, but this was too much of a shock. Less than two days after my first 300 mg dose was given, this worst of the worst muscular and urticarial flare started. It was almost a week before I somehow seen recovered. I was the allergy clinic's first ever patient to react that way. I wish it ended there. Next, we tried Kermelin which was supposed to help me slowly 
I introduced solid food into my body. Who doesn't want to eat? How I wish healthy people could understand that for some who are all ill, must seals are the reason we find it too hard to tolerate food. From the Mayo Clinic website, signs and symptoms of systemic mastocytosis depend on the part of the body affected by excessive mast cells. Too many mast cells can build up in the skin, liver, spleen, bone marrow, or intestines. Signs and symptoms of systemic mastocytosis may include flushing, itching, or hives, abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting, anemia, or bleeding disorders, bone and muscle pain, enlarged liver, spleen, or lymph nodes, depression, mold changes, or problems concentrating. Yes, these mast cells were confirmed to be lining my upper gastrointestinal tract and the lining of my stomach during my endoscopy. Chromaline is listed in the Philippine FDA database, but no distributor could be found. Straight to where we are right now, Loy Ovios Novios, ang favoritism. Kuya Joe's tested positive for antigen 20. Lars took his temperature, then they got antigen kits. Tested him first because he was so unlike himself. He was just lying down on the sofa, nor energy to play, or watch YouTube on his phone. I was in a room upstairs asleep. Nurse woke me up to tell me that Kuya was positive. I honestly couldn't understand what she was trying to tell me until Bim came to explain and he told me to please put on a mask. He helped me to go downstairs. My instinct was to go and hug Kuya, but everyone told me I needed to leave immediately and move to a hotel with Nurse and Bim because I was severely immunocompromised and being positive could mean I see you for me. A new friend here in Houston help us get in touch with a nurse practitioner, the second in command of our family medicine doctor, so that he could issue a prescription for Fox Leuven for Kuya Josh. We had difficulty understanding each other because I was outdoors and wearing a face mask, but what frightened me was when he said, Miss Aquino, your son will survive this. It's you and your younger asthmatic son I am more worried about. Please move elsewhere as soon as you can. It was heartbreaking to leave Kuya. I felt I was abandoning him in our time of need. That night, Nurse Christina came to our hotel and she gave all of us PCR tests. The results came out midnight of the 21st. At that point, we were all still negative. This is when you know who you can really count on, who will love you, come what may. May 22, Anne was telling Kuya Josh that she was leaving that night and going back to LA. Kuya had here and he started sobbing. Anne then made up her mind set her down safety aside and promised Kuya she would stay with him. By the 23rd mid-morning, I asked Nurse Eloy to please check my temperature because I had chills and something was off. True enough, I had fever. I said to please get the antigen test kit. Nurse Eloy tried to remain calm, but in less than 5 minutes, both red lines had appeared. Kuya was already at the same hotel, so I told them to please take Bim. I was exhausted and feel asleep. When I woke up, Anne said, for almost seven hours, he had just been asleep. Mother's instinct kicking. I said, please do an antigen test in him. True enough, less than 12 hours after me. Bim was also positive. Since this was already your death anniversary, somehow I felt reassured, knowing that the three of us would get through this new ordeal, especially because she would never allow us to have a death date so close to yours. I even joked with you. I said, no, you are super bida now because you're the only one with mom and dad. If I die, Bonso will of course get the majority of their attention and for sure, you won't like that. Then I said seriously, Noi, help me please. These two only have me. Please help me survive this. Please. You remember when mom was told that her cancer was stage 4 and from her colon, it had already spread to her liver. The doctors gave her about 3 months to live. Our mom was a fighter. She said, it would be so unfair for the five of us to lose her when none of us were ready. Mom gave it all she had and lasted one year and five months. I want the privacy you had, but unlike you, who was never active on social media, I need to say goodbye properly because so many have reached out to me, prayed for me and my sons, and regardless of their political affiliation, they have prayed for me to get better. Two weeks after I am totally covid free, I need to do 3 to 4 more shots of Solir, given every other week for my chronic spontaneous urticaria. Then I rest for 2 to 3 weeks, hopefully. I have stronger immunity then, knowing Bonsu has only one road left, open to her. 
sadly for Ko Yang Ben, because ultimately my two are the victims. I need to try Rituxan to spare everyone from having a Google and for all to understand why I'm now choosing to say goodbye for now. Rituxan is an immunosuppressant in straightforward language. It is a chemotherapy, but also used for some complicated autoimmune case like mine. Others finish their cycle in one month, one infusion every week. They want to take it slower with me because of how unpredictable my reaction to medicine is. They will split one infusion in two and give that to me every other week. So what other will finish in four weeks? I shall hopefully finish in eight weeks, barring any complications. Then I rest for four to five months and do another cycle or switch to another type of chemo. Only after eight to ten weeks after my first cycle can they test to see if my numbers somewhat improve. Matagaloy. Definitely a test of fortitude and insurance. But before any of that, I need my existing PICC line removed and reinserted and they need to do a nuclear chest scan. My consistently high BP has already sent some alarm bells ringing. We are praying my vasculitis hasn't caused damage to the blood vessels connected to my heart. From the time he was barely 15, what you saw was what it was. That's why I'm saying my goodbye for now. At 51 years old, it was my choice to address as many issues about my health as I could while allowing myself some privacy by not saying where we'll be going because that decision will be made after we are totally free and my attending physician here in Houston can help me choose the hospital, team of doctors, and proximity to friends or family that will best suit my needs. Ngayon, alam na through my open letter to Noy, what Kuya Josh, Bim and I must face in the next year and a half. Please know that I remain thankful for all the concern and prayers you have sent our way but during very difficult times. I want to just keep the suffering to myself with only family and trusted friends. Keep informed on a need-to-know basis because everyone else is also going through their own personal trials. Ang hirap ng buhay para sa marami. Nakakahiyang maging pabigat ako. I know me impossible na hindi ako maamin pag hirap na hirap na. So for now, focus tayo on ourselves. We all have problems, we all have worries, and we all have hardships. God bless us all. Until our reunion. Hashtags, love, 